Hi, my name is Suzanne Gornell. I'm a clinical trials nurse at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and I've been working with kidney cancer for the past 19 years. I'm here to talk to you about what some of the common skin side effects that you see with checkpoint inhibitors and immunotherapy and how they are managed while you're on therapy. So side effects of the skin are among the most common complications of targeted therapies. They account for about 30 to 50% of all the toxicities that patients experience, but they're typically mild and usually can be treated without interruption of immunotherapy. So there are three different types of skin toxicities that we see. One is pruritus or itchiness of the skin, but with the absence of a rash. So on occasion, patients will come in, they'll say that they're itchy at night or they're experiencing some itchiness, but if you look at their skin other than from scratching it, there is no rash. This can either be a primary symptom or secondary to one of the other skin symptoms I'll discuss in the future. So it can be managed with topicals or like camphor menthol, topical steroids, or antihistamines. Only in severe cases does pruritus require interruption of therapy and the need for oral steroids. Morbilliform rash, this occurs in about a quarter of patients receiving some of the checkpoint inhibitors. They typically happen in the first couple of weeks of treatment and they're pink papules. They almost look similar to the measles and it's generalized on the body. It's typically on the trunk and the limbs, not so much the face, or the palms of the hands or soles of the feet. Again, they're typically low grade. They respond to topical steroids, but on occasion, it does become severe and treatment needs to be interrupted. This is something we typically like you to see a dermatologist for because it can be quite severe and sometimes can look like it's an allergic reaction. So on occasion, patients do need to interrupt therapy and get treated with an oral steroid. The other type of skin reaction we sometimes see is lichenoid dermatitis. This occurs in about 20% of patients receiving checkpoint inhibitors. This can happen at any point during therapy from weeks to months into therapy or even after therapy has been completed. This rash looks, it's itchy, it's pink papules, but it has an overlying of a white scaliness. It can appear to look like psoriasis or eczema. And it might not be everywhere. It might be on your ankle, on an arm. And again, this can be treated with topical steroids or anti-itch drugs. But when more severe, your treatment may need to be held and treated with oral steroids. And people with severe reactions of this type will sometimes need to stop therapy and get phototherapy to this area. Um, but in most often, patients are able to remain on therapy. These patients, we definitely have seen with dermatologists, and they will biopsy it in order to diagnose it. Dermatologists play a crucial role in the multidisciplinary care of patients on immunotherapy or checkpoint inhibitors. Oncologists can generally manage low-grade skin issues without need for a dermatologic consultation, but we do usually include a dermatologist because at any point it can become to a point that it's more severe and we want the patients in the system and let the dermatologist see how it's changed. So we are often working closely with a dermatologist. We have a dermatologist in as soon as possible because they have a more targeted approach towards managing the skin and it's very valuable in being able to continue therapy and keep the patient on the course. So if you have any issues with your skin, even though we're warning you in advance, you will likely have skin issues, we still need to know about it. You still need to report these symptoms to your nurse or to your physician so that we can implement care as soon as possible and can keep you on your course of therapy for your cancer. Any further questions, please reach out to your nurse or a physician, and I hope this helps.